Hello everyone, Rick Grantham over at Excel TV. Uh, gosh, I haven't talked to you guys in a long time as Jordan has been putting out most of our content this year. But I did want to address one of the comments that we got in one of our recent, or one of our most famous blog posts. Um, and that blog post was Monte Carlo simulation in Excel and how do you go about creating that? This happens to be also our most popular YouTube video by far. So going over to the blog, we talked a bit about what is Monte Carlo simulation. We talked about different types of distribution curves. Now in this one, we actually use the uniform distribution, which is your standard bell curve. However, I did talk briefly in the blog post about one of the most utilized, underutilized distributions is the Poisson distribution. And we talked about how do you build the model, etc. So down in our comments section, gosh, we've got like 19 comments on this one. Um, just a little over a month ago, Dave asked, how do you do the simulation if you have a Poisson distribution? We need another article that covers this example. It would be useful. Well, thank you for that, Dave. Um, so this is that article and this is that video. So this isn't as easy as it would seem. Um, so in this case, we're going to show you how to use it just using VLOOKUP and normal formulas that you'd have in Excel without needing to have the analysis tab activated. So let's walk through that. First off, what is Poisson distribution? Actually, let's chat through that a little bit further first. So that might be new to some people. About a decade or so ago, whenever, um, whenever Six Sigma was very popular, you know, I, I was going through my Six Sigma black belt training and the master black belts in there did talk about Poisson distribution quite a bit. Now, I'm not sure if this is 100% true, but this is what I remember of that at the time, is that um, you use count type data. So there, by that, I mean there is no 2.38 as a possibility. You know, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the person who came up with this distribution was studying the number of horse kicks that happened on the, on the battlefield. You know, the number of deaths that were happening, et cetera. And so in some cases, it would be one horse kick, two horse kicks, three horse kicks. But And the number was never less than zero. And there was some maximum number. So if you could imagine how this looks, then there's a very quick rise. So maybe zero to one or two horse kicks. And then a, then a decrease and a very long tail. Right? A very long tail on the distribution curve. So it looks like this. Um, so uh, another place that that happens, just from my background, almost anybody who's been in Excel for a long time started their career in a call center. And so certainly we see that in call centers as well, where nobody answers before zero seconds, right? Hopefully you get a good portion of people in about 10 or 15 seconds that you're answering them. Again, count data. And, but there's a very long tail where this could go up to 120 seconds or even longer, you know. So that's how that distribution looks. But building that out in Excel could be a bit difficult. So let's walk through one of the ways you can do that using um, a call center as an example. So there's a few things you're going to need for the Poisson distribution. Um, number one, you're going to need the mean. So let's look through what that is. So first off, what I have down here, since I did talk about count data, let's kind of go ahead and call this your count data instead of X to make it a little bit easier. So you have your count data. And so in this case, I went from zero all the way up to 45, and I'll explain why I chose 45 in a second. Um, and then I created your cumulative probability. So let's just zoom in on this a little bit so you can see the, well, I guess that doesn't make this any bigger. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the Poisson distribution. Um, I'm looking at E5, which is the number. And then it's going to ask for what your mean is. Okay, so let's go through that then. And so if I was to create Poisson from the very beginning, Poisson distribution, we'd have what your X is. X is the count data, the, the number that you're counting. It would ask for what your mean is. In this case, we have a mean here. And, and in this case, we put in true for cumulative. If I wanted to put in false, it would just give me the probability of that number. But I want this to be cumulative so that we can see as things reach 100. 
Also, this makes it a lot easier for uh, VLOOKUP, which is what we're going to use here. Okay, so let's get out of that. So that's what we did here. And the reason I just created this to the left is I'm not going through how to do XLOOKUP or any of the new functions here. Um, so I'm just going to grab all my probabilities to the left because I'm going to want to look up that count data at a VLOOKUP. Uh, but this has an inherent problem, right? And the problem with this is that since I'm looking up zero, what about if the number is less than less than 4.5 percent, or excuse me, uh, less than half a per, half of a half a percent? You know, it's it's 0 0.0035 percent or 37 percent at my VLOOKUP table. So that creates a problem where we don't necessarily have a top and a bottom. The bottom being zero percent, the top being a hundred percent. Uh, the way we solve that for the purposes of our VLOOKUP is I'll create a cumulative probability for VLOOKUP. And I created the first one at 0% so that I solve for that. And we move everything down one. So you can see here, now I'm, I'm looking at count data of zero. And I'm bringing out our probabilities here. Okay. So now I have a go all the way to 100. But because... Uh, Poisson distributions have very long tails. You may get to the very end here and have to actually type in 100 because this could have potentially, depending on where I put the mean, this could have gone to you know 150 or longer. So that might that might not be good for our purposes. Um, so in some cases, you'll go in and you'll actually type in 100. So let's get to where does the magic work as far as Monte Carlo simulation and using VLOOKUP. So over here on the right hand side. I just counted out the number of iterations, and you can see in this case we're going to use, scrolling down, I ended up using a thousand iterations. There we go. I ended up using a thousand iterations, but the real magic happens over here in our value. So the way our value is done is we are looking at, let's go ahead and uh, make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So we're using a VLOOKUP. So we're going to look up the cumulative probability for a VLOOKUP. Um, our random is going to we're going to use random, and we're going to create our table for VLOOKUP. We're looking up the second column in our VLOOKUP, and we're going to make that true. So doing that, you see in here, we have we can then do summary statistics on the value in the right hand side. Now the cool thing about this is since we use the RAND formula. Every time we hit the enter button in here, you can see everything in column I will recalculate. So we're getting a completely different thousand every time, completely different thousand iterations. And we could have gone hundreds of thousands if we chose to. So what is the likelihood of a call being answered in under 15 seconds in this case? Just based on our cumulative probability, we would have expected that to have been around 91%, 91.65%, right? Uh, however, in this thousand that we went through, it was 91.4. The way that looks is we did a count if we pulled everything in here, and I said I want to know what's under 15 seconds, um, and divide that by a thousand, because we had a thousand iterations. Uh, so in this case, it was 91.2. If we hit that again, the number is likely to change a little bit. 91.3 in this case. So it's going to hover right around that number, 92.6. If we were to change the mean here, uh, say we make the mean 7, see the numbers change pretty dramatically there. Now, one of the things, since if we made the mean larger, if we made the mean, we'll say, 20 seconds, what we're going to find as we go to the bottom that we haven't quite reached 100%. Imagine the mean is 40 so we haven't quite hit that yet, so we may end up having to drag that down further and alter some of our formulas over here since I didn't actually create a table out of this. So, okay, so that's it. That's how you do Poisson distribution, Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, there will also be a blog post uh, link to down below where you can actually pick up this file uh, in the blog post where we'll go in a bit more detail. So that's it. That's how you create Monte Carlo simulation using a Poisson distribution. Thank you very much for the question, Dave. And until next time, keep on excelling.